Hello. Hello, boys and girls. I've been sitting in this for a minute because it sounds kind of silly, but in light of what's happening with Roe versus Wade, um, I've been thinking, what would happen if people started holding overweight men accountable for their suicidal nutritional choices? Hear me out. If you know that your extended belly resembles that of a woman who's in her 11th month and you technically could be carrying quadruplets, but you can't because you don't have a uterus, that means you're fucking fat. And I'm a big girl, but I'm talking about you men, just you men who do not have uterus. You do not have any uteri. So let's say, for example, Roe versus Wade is thrown to the wayside. <laughs> what should we do with all of you fat men? Bellies exceeding a good health limit. You have children, you have loved ones, wives, sisters, mothers, brothers, fathers, businesses, businesses to run, and you still choose bad nutrition. And that bad nutrition is leading to heart disease and a plethora of other diseases that affect your major organs to live and survive and to thrive, right? What happens if we hold you accountable because you're supposed to know better? You're supposed to know better that you should have clean pizza versus like deep dish pizza, right? Or you should have more salads versus over fried red meats and chickens and things like that. What happens if we put into legislation nutritional suicide? Because if you're supposed to know better, you know, because your attitude and your opinions are all up in our uteri, then we could be all up in your guts. I mean, right? So what happens if we all decide that because you fat men with responsibilities are not holding yourselves accountable to the same standards you want us women to hold ourselves accountable and you're in our uteruses, what happens if we arrest you for being overweight and unfit and ill-prepared to tend to your families, your businesses, your co-workers, police officers, husbands, doctors, anyone that, you know, is a male and has an extended waistline. Like forget your erection. Let's talk about your organs removing the penis. And let's say we arrest you if you don't get fit in a certain amount of time and we throw your fatty asses in jail and we force you to juice, and we force you to work out four or five, six times a day in jail. Think of it as a demonic, the biggest loser. There is no comfort, because it's prison. You're committing a crime against yourself and your loved ones, because your wife has a right for you to be healthy and to live long, your 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 husband, if you're a gay man, has a right for you to live healthy. And live, I mean, please. Most fat gay men are single, but anyway, that's a whole nother story. My point is this. What if that became a thing? Nutritional suicide. What if he held you accountable for being poorly nourished on your own accord? What if we made you responsible with jail and prison punishment for doing the wrong thing nutritionally? Isn't that fair? I mean, doesn't that make sense? If you're supposed to know better, why aren't you doing better by yourself and for yourself? I mean, isn't that what you're telling us women? Because it's not just you, you tell us. It's a family. Someone else can tend to this, right? Someone else can, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna have this baby that you don't want. A lot of women, it tears their bodies up. They still wanna have more, God bless you. Also, really stop breathing. Um, but 
what if we put you in jail for being obese men, unfit men, ill-prepared men for physical fitness? And we kept you even in jail after you lost the weight, but until we thought you were mentally ready to come outside and eat better and exercise better. Because if that makes no sense to you, welcome to the motherfucking conversation.